Hi, and welcome back to Plastic Models by a Regular Dude, and <clears throat> part number seven of the Tamiya 135th scale M2A2 Bradley. So in the last video, uh, part number six, I got the construction finished and um, got the primer and the base layer of paint put on. So now I'm ready to start with the other camouflage colors, which are NATO brown and NATO black. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with one side. And what I've done is I've cut the, just to make them easy, I can put them on the back of my, board, my uh, paint board here, is I'm gonna do a side at a time and just work myself, uh, work my way around. And the color I'm gonna use first is gonna be the NATO brown. So I'll do this, then I'll move on to the front and then have to guess on the other side. So I'll do something similar to this and do the back and the top. So um, I'm gonna start with this side here first and I'm going to do the turret separately but I'll use the pa the pattern from below continue it on up to the top so let me get my paint ready and uh, we'll get ready to start working on it and for this I will be using my Neo Free Wada TRN1 because I can control the flow a whole lot better Test it on the bottom here a little bit. Okay, that'll work. So I want to build it up. So let me tilt this up somehow. And I can get cracking. Hopefully I won't get my noggin in the way. Okay, so using the illustrations, I got the uh, brown put on. So now I'm going to mix up some of the NATO black and start spraying that. All right, using the same airbrush, the TRN1, I will start painting this stuff. All right, the black, the needle black, brown, and um, green is done for the most part. So what I need to do now is I need to go through and check for any uh, anomalies or things that need to be fixed. For instance, right here, don't know if you can see it on the video, but there's a little bit of overspray from this brown here. So I need to touch that up with some green. Um, and really, I think that's, uh, and then I, I need to go through on a few of the brown items and kind of uh, make them a little more opaque. And then one more thing I need to do is, it's not really noticeable in the illustration here, but I think it's because of shadows, you know, uh, worked into the artwork but it looks like this right here should be brown on the edge of this um, I could be wrong but it kind of looks like it and I think I'm going to do that just because the only brown on the top is right here so think that needs to be uh, I think that needs to be fixed so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and again I'm gonna do it off camera because it's just too hard to get in real tight and close uh, with my fine airbrush to do it without getting my head in the way so let me do all that and I will come back okay with all of the spring be being completed I can now move on to some more detailed painting 
Um, specifically, I need to paint the barrel of the gun. I need to paint these little caps here black on these uh, dischargers. Um, I also need to paint the ammo boxes and in addition to that I need to paint these ammo boxes so I'll do all those at the same time because these go back here. Um, so I'm going to cut those off and get ready to paint them all. Let's see. Yeah. So I need to paint those. <clears throat> so let me get my paints out, get ready, and we'll start to uh, we'll start working on that. All right. So the first thing I'm going to paint here is going to be the wow um, the uh, coax machine gun barrel. Whoops, and the main gun barrel. And for that, I'm going to use Vallejo <clears throat> metal color steel because it looks pretty good so let's see let me pick a brush here I think I'll use this one hopefully my fuzzy head won't get in the way so I'm just gonna put a little bit in this lid here Clean that lid up, and then boy, this brush is about shot. You know what? As a matter of fact, I'm gonna chuck that thing. It ain't no good. It ain't good for weathering stuff. So let's try this one. This one has a little better shape to it. Yep, that'll work a little better, I think. This will be smooth. I was thinking about spraying it, but changed my mind. Yeah, it's pretty good. Just like. Doing it in long, smooth drags of the brush along the barrel to hopefully keep any weird paint marks or brush marks. Like that. So I'll clean my brush and then I can start painting some ammo cans. Okay, so I opted not to use the kit ammo cans. So I got some out of my uh, stash. Need to do a little bit of filling there, but uh, that'll be easy enough. But I'm going to prime them before I paint them because I'm going to spray them. And while I'm doing that, I'm also going to go ahead and spray the spare tracks so I need to clean these up okay before I get these actually painted I need to add a little bit of detail so <clears throat> what I'm going to do here now I'm not real confident in what uh, goes on with these tracks and stuff but it looks like um, a bit of a a bit of a head shows on one side and then an indentation on the other side where this pin is, okay? This track pin. 
and then this side here obviously that needs to be hollowed out so the track pin can go all the way through so I've already done my pilot holes and I've already scraped everything and sanded everything that needs to be sanded so now I'm gonna see if I can actually pull this off so using my handy dandy micro mark little drill bits here um, I've got a little piece of round plastic that I'm going to use for the head. So I need to get something that is that diameter. And let's try the 0.8. It looks a little bit too small because it's got to be slightly... It's got to be slightly larger. So when that pin fits in, there's still you know, a line, a ridge around the outside edge. So let's see, let's try the one millimeter. So this is going to be really close. So I need to make sure I don't go too far. Yeah, it's pretty centered, so. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, so there's that one. I think that one's good. So let's try this one here. I'm doing this real lightly because I don't want it to dig in too much right off the bat because it could cause problems if it's not centered. That looks pretty good. So let's see if I can. <laughs> okay, so there's that one. <clears throat> so now I'm going to drill the other side just a little bit smaller. Uh, and... <clears throat> All right, so I've got the ammo uh, boxes painted, so those are ready to go. I got the tracks primed and painted with <clears throat> my, uh... oh, let's see, where to go? Ammo by MIG Rush Tracks color. Um, that's just the base. I'll be doing some more weathering and rust dust effects on it and then i painted the ammo cans and the holders here so those are ready to go so the next thing i need to do is i want to paint the uh, <clears throat> the metal parts on the um on the tools but i'm gonna do a real quick check and see if they should be painted or if they were just painted over uh, during the camouflage process. So I'm gonna check that and then uh, and just to make sure. So after doing a bit of research, it appears that the tools were most often painted in place and then obviously they would show wear afterwards. That's just some of the information I can find. Can't find anything definitive. So that's what I'm going with. So if it's wrong, that's a bummer. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to mix up a little bit of uh, I'm going to use steel and I am going to attempt a little bit of quasi weathering techniques uh, for these. So <clears throat> using my steel paint and my brush for metal paints, yes, I have a separate brush for metal paints because I don't like mixing them up. Uh, put a little bit in my little cap here. Whoa! Zooming in a little bit and begin. So here's my plan. 
I'm going to paint this front edge right here solid with the silver. And then I am going to do a little bit of dry brushing back from that to make it look like <clears throat> the uh, the paint has worn off. On the part of the shovel that gets used okay same thing with the axe head and the pick like that the sledgehammer that is inside completely a little pocket there so I just need to a little bit there Here. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the wood handles. I'm going to do some real light chipping type of stuff on the handles <coughs> with a wood color. So that takes care of that. Okay, so let's let that dry for a minute. I'll clean my brush and then we'll come back and do a little bit of dry brushing. Okay, so here's what I'm doing. I'm just softening this up a little bit. That harsh edge from painting it. Same thing here. A little more paint on there. Like that. Same here. probably touch it up a little bit more after I put a flat coat and everything on it just so it'll just so it'll show up shiny again but at least this gives me an idea of where I want to show up <clears throat> anywhere where there's an edge where it would get 
get knocked off. Whether or not this is perfect, I don't know. But hey, at least it breaks it up a little bit. So there's that. So I'll do a little bit more of that once the flat coat and everything <clears throat> is done. But that way at least, you know, it's a starting point and I can touch it up a little bit more and make it look a little bit better. But I kind of have an idea. I'll probably go out and take a look at some of my shovels out in the shed. See how they're, they've worn over time. So let's see. Next thing we need to do is some more detail painting. I've got lights to paint and other such things. So let me see what I've got to do first. Actually, before I get into that, I'm going to go ahead and glue these tracks on here. And I will have pretty much everything attached. And I can think about a uh, first thing I want to do before I get too much further is I want to go ahead and do a, uh, a wash on this thing. So let me see which direction these tracks go. So the track goes like this. <clears throat> and the other one, which goes over here somewhere. Also, I need to glue the uh, ammo box. Okay, there's the other track. And I think that goes the same way with it kind of. faces down as well like this so let me go ahead and glue this one first all right I scraped some paint away there I'm gonna use this and see if I can stick this in place without smearing the glue all over the place like that okay there's that one I'll do the same thing here. Okay, with the final um, parts glued into place, next thing I need to do is I need to put the decals on. Because once I get the decals on, I want to um, I want to do a flat coat. So let me get the decals out here, and I'm going to attempt to use these uh, 1991 decals. They don't look like they're crackly or weird or anything, so I'm going to give it a shot. So for the decals, I'm going to use Tamiya Mark Fit. That's been working pretty well, and I got my decal water here and my decals. So the instructions themselves only show how to do... the um, decals for the desert scheme. So for the NATO scheme, I need to use the box illustrations, which is what I used as my pattern for, um, for the paint. So what I'll do first, I'll do the front first. And basically all there is is are these markings here. So there's two of them. There is this one here, which is number four. And this one here, which is number five. So let me get those cut off and I will get those in some water. Let's see what I can do about installing them. Okay, so what I did is I dipped in water. Now this, uh, this is just a quick comment. Uh, one of the things I like about some of these older decal sheets is when you dip the decal in the water, you'll see, you can see it. If you just hold it there, you can just see the paper just absorbing the water. So it changes from this lighter blue to this darker blue. Once it's totally kind of this dark blue, I take them out, set them on the paper towel to um, loosen the adhesive and boom it's working like a champ 
these are really old decals and they're working nicely so far so I'll get my you know you won't be able to see me actually place it because the angle but you can just pretend like you're right here with me watching get right there like that make sure it's straight get a cotton swabby slash q-tip slash cotton bud and mash that baby down okay get the fuzz off Flipping annoying. Okay, so then we'll put a little bit more on top and see if this thing sticks. This will be the real test. See if it sticks. So there's that one. Sorry, I'm off camera there, but. We have to trim that film off. But we'll see what happens. We'll try it with the Mark Fit Strong or the Mark Fit, and then I'll try it with the Solve Set if necessary. So I'll go ahead and do this other decal. Come back. All right, I made a quick change because um, I was going to apply the decals without a clear coat. However. Um, when I put the mark fit, uh, it does, it actually dissolved the paint. So I put a clear coat that way the rest of the decals, uh, when I put those on, I shouldn't have a problem. And the clear coat I used was, um, aqua gloss clear by all clad. So I'm going to continue on with these here decals so the next ones so that's everything for the front there's just the two um, so then for the back I've got these blue and red panels and uh, then the similar markings to the front HQ and then the um, I'm assuming it's company company numbers I'm not very familiar with uh, modern military markings so anyway so I need um, this one for the left this one for the right so I will cut the whoops cut those off get those prepped and then install those so we got the small ones on and all the larger ones and we got to save for 30 year old decals these things are working really good and I am pretty stoked because I originally I thought about getting aftermarket decals I didn't think these would be healthy enough after being around for so long but fortunately that was not necessary and the clear is working great in preventing the uh, paint from dissolving whoops okay so I'll stick this other one on real quick and then we'll come back all right so next I'm gonna start painting some of these details I'm starting with these here that are supposed to be black for that I'm using um, model air 7125 NATO black which is a lot more black than the actual NATO black from um, mission models but I don't want to use just a straight-up black so I'm going to paint these up real quick like. 
Okay, so I got those parts detail painted and I think everything else is done that needs to be done. So now I need to let this dry really well uh, before I'm ready to start doing uh, pin washes and stuff like that. So I think I'll end this video here and next time when I come back, I'll start with some washes and start doing some weathering and maybe start working on this job right here but we shall see if that happens next time so thanks for watching part 7 of the Tamiya 135th scale M2A2 Bradley so as always if you have any questions comments hints tips anything like that please put that down in the comment section down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can so as always thanks for watching and I'll see you all later